Hello and welcome to the East Porter County School Corporation. We strive every day to provide a positive learning environment for our students and we thank you for choosing to work with our children. This video will provide you with the information necessary to help you know what to do to follow each building's specific procedures and how to keep your students safe in crisis situations. When you arrive at the school each day, it is important that you sign in with the office, pick up your keys for the day, and check with the secretary to see if there are any changes in your plans. It is expected that you alone will use the keys and badge that you are provided with. Do not allow students to use them for any reason. When you enter your room assignment for the day, you will notice there will be a school crisis flip chart located by the phone. This flip chart will help you to understand what to do in the scenarios outlined within. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the room and procedures each day you arrive to sub. Also in your room, you should find the One County, One Protocol sheet. Each of the schools in Porter County follows the One County, One Protocol plan. Familiarize yourself with this sign so that you know what to do in case of an emergency. You will now see a portion of the One County, One Protocol video that has been shown to all students and staff members. This video focuses on three specific actions contained within the protocol. Lockout, lockdown, and evacuation. Each action is followed by a directive. For example, lockout, secure the perimeter. Lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. Evacuate, go to the stated location. You will be notified of these directives via the school's PA system. Each action and directive will be repeated twice. For example, lock out, secure the perimeter. Lock out, secure the perimeter. Let's begin with lock out. Lock out is used when a threat is outside the school. The directive you will hear is lock out, secure the perimeter. Lock out, secure the perimeter. Bring everyone in and then lock the doors. Lockout? Yes, thank you. We are on lockout. Secure the perimeter. We are on lockout. Secure the perimeter. A lockout would be initiated if there was a violent person or an incident within the community near your school. When a lockout occurs, students and staff should come back into the building and ensure any exterior doors in your vicinity are secured. Increase your situational awareness and account for students. Lockouts are typically called by law enforcement officials or district personnel. The goals of a lockout are to get all students and staff inside the building and then lock all exterior doors. In most cases of a lockout, it will be business as usual once inside the school. When a lockout does occur, students should come back into the building and once inside, it is business as usual. For teachers and staff, a lockout means get students back into the building. Ensure that the exterior doors in your vicinity are secure, increase your situational awareness, account for students, and then it is back to teaching classes as usual. The next action we will discuss is a lockdown. A lockdown is used when there is a threat inside the school. The directive you will hear is lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. A lockdown is the response to an internal school threat. A lockdown entails locking interior doors, turning off lights, and hiding. We are on lockdown, lock, lights out of sight, again, lockdown, lock, lights out of sight. Remove personal items and backpacks off of desks so they are not seen from the doorway. During a lockdown, you must be quiet. If you can be heard, then the intruder knows where you are. During a lockdown, teachers and staff need to lock all interior doors, turn off the lights, 
turn off all computer monitors, silence cell phones, move students away from the line of sight of the hallway, maintain silence, and remain calm. Since the threat is already in the building during a lockdown, there is no advantage to locking exterior school doors. In fact, these doors allow quick access to law enforcement responding to the threat. An actual lockdown may not be resolved for several hours. Stay in the same location and do not move around the room. Remain silent. Teachers and staff should take written attendance of who is in the room. Know anyone missing or if you have any extra students and staff. During the initial moments of a school violence situation, the official call for a lockdown may not have occurred. And teachers, administrators, staff, and students must be ready to react to the situation in the best manner that assures your safety and survival. If there is no PA announcement, students, teachers, and staff need to assess their personal safety. If there is no PA announcement, administrators, students, teachers, and staff need to assess their personal safety. This is a situation which may call for run, hide, defend. Run to avoid detection. Hide. Do not remain in a common area where your safety is at risk. Once you've found a room to hide in, you must do everything possible to deny entry. Defend as a last resort. You and others may have to defend yourselves by attacking the assailant. Teachers and staff will want to activate school guard, which not only alerts local law enforcement departments, but also individual law enforcement agents, those both on and off duty. Activating school guard also notifies 911 dispatchers. Remember, you have to decide on the action that is best for your safety in the situation. In a run-hide defense situation, the best course of action may be evacuation. Evacuation means exiting the school and leaving the campus. If you are in a hallway, common area, or near an exterior door, evacuation may be your best choice. Once you are in a safe location, you should immediately check in with your parents and school district to let them know you are safe. If you do not know where the threat is and you are behind a locked door, stay there. If the door isn't locked, lock it and hide. Remember, locks lights out of sight. Is it okay to use the internet? No. This causes usage of bandwidth and can hinder communication and internet access for first responders. When should you open your classroom door? Once the door is closed and locked, it should remain closed and locked until law enforcement enter and provide instructions. Should classroom windows be covered? No. Covering the windows announces that there is someone inside and hiding. Covering windows also prohibits officers from assessing the situation in each room. Should you call 911? Yes, but only if you have important information, such as a description of the intruder or what the intruder is wearing. Too many calls to 911 will overload the system and could confuse first responders. How long will you have to stay hidden? The event could take hours. Your safety is the first responder's main priority. First responders have to be confident that once an evacuation begins, you will not be put in harm's way. Some circumstances may call for you to defend yourself. Each situation is different, and each person, whether a teacher, staff, or student, must make the decision for yourself. It is your choice. If the time comes where you feel there is no option but to defend yourself and those with you, you must step up and commit without hesitation. The American law enforcement response to these type of emergencies is the best in the world. The average response time from notification to the first officer on the scene is three minutes. A lockdown is a great response to these type of situations, but it is not a guarantee of survival. 
The following options are given in the event a lockdown fails or the situation unfolds before the lockdown directive has been given. The first priority is to run to avoid an encounter with the gunman. If you are in the same room when the shooter begins shooting, your options are limited. You can either run or defend. If you are in the same building, but not the same room, your first action should always be to run from the location of the gunman. If possible, get out of the building and run until you are sure you are safe. If it is not possible to evacuate the building, run and hide in a room where the door can be secured. When you have found a room in which to hide, you must take steps to deny entry to the gunman. A lock is a great start, but a lock is no guarantee to stop someone who is determined to get in. Quickly move furniture and other obstacles in front of the door to barricade the door. If you have done everything possible to slow the gunman from gaining access and have no other way to escape the building, you must now prepare to defend yourselves and fight for your lives. Should the gunmen work their way past the locked door, they must deal with the obstacles you have placed in their way. This will normally be where the gunman must take one hand off of their weapon and at the point at which the gunman will be most vulnerable. Use anything and everything as potential weapons. A fire extinguisher, a bookend, a chair leg, or the swarm attack. You must remember to remain calm, remain quiet, and to be patient. Remember, this could take several hours. When law enforcement begins the evacuation, an officer will unlock your door and enter the room. Stay where you are. The officer will give you specific instructions for you to follow. You will be instructed to leave your personal belongings behind and form a line at the door. Middle and high school students will place their hands on their head where officers can see them. Elementary students will be instructed to hold hands with one another. Sheriff's Department! Sheriff's Department! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! Good! Slowly step on out with your hands up. Good job, guys. Good job. Put your hands on top of your heads. In a single file line, walk to that officer one at a time. One at a time. Turn around, sir. Real good. No problem. All right, right after the stop. The final stage of ending a lockdown is reunification. Students will be taken from the affected site to a unification site, and parents will be notified via the school district's messaging system. Parents and students will be assigned to separate sites until identification is verified, and then the final action we will be discussing is evacuate. Evacuate is how to move students in an orderly fashion from point A to point B. With our one county, one protocol guidelines, Evacuate will always be followed by a location. For example, evacuate to the gym. Evacuate to the gym. Students must leave their belongings, no purses or backpacks. Take only small items such as keys, cell phone, or wallet. For safety and security, police will not allow you to carry a bag. Students, depending on the nature of the situation, you may be asked to place your hands on your head or to hold the hand of the person in front of you. Teachers and staff will lead students to the evacuation site. If a room does not have a teacher, that room will combine with another classroom at the reunification site. Fire. The state of Indiana has changed the regulations for fire evacuation allowing up to a three minute hold prior to evacuation to scan the premises for intruders. Students will be evacuated via the PA system once the premises are secured. Once the all clear is given to vacate, follow the instructions for evacuation located near the classroom door. Ask your secretary if the building you are in follows this procedure. When evacuating, take your class list and the red and green cards with you. Once you are out of the building in a safe location, take roll and hold up the green card if all are present. If anyone is missing, hold up the red card so that the administration can locate any missing students. Tornado. In the event of severe weather, you will hear the command, seek shelter over the PA system. Follow the instructions for tornado evacuation located near the door. 
have students proceed to the specified location, remain quiet, kneel down with their heads facing the wall and or locker, and interlock their fingers covering the back of their head at the base of their necks. Have students do so until released over the PA system. Take a moment to look at the maps of tornado safe areas for the building that you are currently subbing in. Lockdown. During a lockdown drill, you will hear locks, lights, out of sight over the PA system. At this time, you are to check the hallway for stray students and instruct them into your classroom. Have your students remain quiet, hide in a portion of the classroom that is out of the view from the window and the door, and wait until all clear is given via the PA. If it is not a drill, you and the students will remain in lockdown until first responders release you from your room. Do not open the door for anyone once you have closed it for the lockdown. Lockout. During a lockout, classes will proceed as usual, but no one will be allowed in or out of the building. This is usually done when an event is happening somewhere in the vicinity of the building, and we are taking proactive measures to keep our staff and students safe. You will know you are in a lockout as someone will come over the PA system and state, Lockout. Secure the perimeter. This will be lifted by an administrator via the PA system. Building Access Please review with your first period students that they are never to open doors for anyone, even if they think that person is okay. Also, doors are never to be propped open. Remember, no one else is to use the keys or badge provided to you. Be observant and practice due diligence. If any employee sees a stranger in the building without a visitor's badge, politely ask them if you can help them. Good morning, may I help you? Point them to the office to obtain a visitor's badge or contact the office if the person ignores you or refuses. It is important to know the address of the building you are subbing at in case of an emergency. The address for schools are as follows. Couts Middle and High School and Elementary School, 302 East College Avenue, Couts, Indiana, 46347. Morgan Middle High School and Elementary School, 299 Indiana 49, Valparaiso, Indiana 46383. Washington Township Elementary School, 383 East State Road 2, Valparaiso, Indiana 46383. Washington Township Middle High School, 381 East State Road 2, Valparaiso, Indiana 46383. Injuries. Contact the office or nurse immediately and fill out an accident report form found in the emergency folder for any injury or accident which occurs on school grounds or on a field trip, even minor injuries. Give this form to the school nurse. It's better to be safe than sorry. Document each offense in case the injury happens to be worse than it initially appeared. Drugs, alcohol, weapons. If you suspect a student is in possession or under the influence of any of these items, quietly and immediately contact an administrator. Continue teaching as normal and do not confront the student or allow them to be aware that you suspect anything. Fights. Teachers are not expected to physically break up fights. However, teachers will be fully supported for exercising reasonable judgment in restraining or preventing students from harming themselves or others. Separate the two students and either escort to the office or have another student get an administrator to come to your location. Never send either or both students to the office without an adult escort. Universal precautions. For all spills, use protective gloves and keep students away from the spill. Call the office to call the custodian. A general rule of thumb to go by is if it's wet and it's not yours, don't touch it. 
passes. Students should be limited to leaving the classroom. If a student asks to go somewhere specifically, call down to that location and tell the teacher or adult that they are coming. You can even ask them to call you when the student is leaving to come back. Please limit trips to lockers or having multiple students leaving at the same time. If a student does not return to the classroom in a timely manner, call the office. Attention to writing and looking at passes weakens as the school year progresses. Always write passes, check passes, and check return time on those passes. Spot check by communicating with the sending or receiving staff member as to return or arrival of the student. This takes just a few seconds and keeps the students from wandering and taking advantage of looseness with passes. Attendance. For attendance purposes, please fill out the teacher's daily record of absences sheet with the names of absent students and bring it down to the office at the end of the day to be turned in with your sub and emergency folders and badge. Call the office with absences from your first class of the day. Cell phones. Cell phone use is absolutely not permitted in the classroom or the hallways of East Porter County Schools. Cell phones may only be used before or after school. Any student caught with their cell phone should be sent to the office. An adult is to give the cell phone to the office. If you have any issues, call the office and an administrator will come to confiscate the phone. We thank you for choosing to be a part of East Porter County Schools in our communities. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact the office of the building you are subbing in. East Porter County School Corporation, the district of choice.